So what about DHT and E2 levels? So here, here's a nice chart from this, uh, this article. The first one is the serum testosterone levels. So as we've talked about already, you can see the curves are very, very similar. The subcutaneous um, group, tiny bit less in this particular case. So not clinically significant, they said, but a slight, slightly less. When we come over and we look at DHT, you do see a rise in DHT that is above what was experienced in the IM group, at least initially. So maybe there is something to this sub-Q, you know, injecting near the dermis thing. But interestingly enough, as time went on, the green line here, which is the subcutaneous group, their DHT levels actually ended up, by the time they needed their next injection, being significantly lower than the intramuscular group. So you get a little bit more extra DHT at the beginning and then a little bit less at the end as compared to intramuscular, at least with undecanoate. And then finally, uh, the estradiol curve here, very, very similar. If anything, you know, you do get, at least according to this study, a little bit more estradiol out of the gate with an intramuscular injection. But then um, kind of the reverse of what we saw with DHT is that the subcutaneous group had slightly higher estradiol levels towards the end just before, you know, they were due for their next in injection as compared to the intramuscular group. So again, th these were not, these were not considered to be of clinical significance because the patients didn't report feeling any different. There were just some minor differences in the numbers. So, so take it for what it's worth. You know, ultimately the delivery method that you decide, even if, whether it's injection, injecting, whether it's transdermal, I mean, there's pr pros and cons to all of that. And the same thing goes with these injections. Um, uh, you know, ultimately I, I present both options to my patients and I let them decide. We know that you can get essentially identical levels of testosterone, DHT, and estradiol for the most part, with some minor variations, at least according to these studies. All the studies, with the exception of the undecanoate one, which I think doesn't count, showed that there was overall less pain and discomfort with subcutaneous injections. But one of the things I will say that they didn't mention in all these studies and that I have seen clinically and, and maybe you've experienced too, is you know some people have kind of low-grade local reactions to the carrier oils or maybe to some of the proteins that are dissolved in the carrier oils or perhaps to the preservatives. And so I have seen guys that have gotten like little welts, sometimes little hard nodules under the skin that sometimes take a few weeks to go away um, that I have not seen when they do intramuscular injections. So, you know, if you are getting these irritating nodules or these, these little local, they sort of look like a hive, like a local area of raised erythema, might be a little itchy, might not. You know, if you're getting those, then you may want to either switch carrier oils if you want to stick with subcutaneous injections or just switch to intramuscular injections because that, then you won't, you won't get that.